I recently got bangs and they refuse, they refuse to meet. Like, someone tell me the secret to keeping bangs together. Like, please, I need help. Hello and welcome to this video. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I just wanted to show you my most recent plant-related hauls, like pots and new plants, and some updates on my current um, babies from my last video because there has been some slight changes. I've done some repotting. I've made a few things. I DIY some stuff, so I'm very excited to show you. We're going to start off with this one and yes I already have if you see my last video I already had a begonia cutting um the begonia mac maculata I'm pretty sure I'm, if I'm saying that right but unfortunately the mother leaf of that cutting she just eventually shriveled up and I was like you know what she's not doing so hot and I just snipped her off, but the little pups on that same stem are still growing, and I want to give it away. I'm just terrified that this won't get enough humidity because I'm too lazy to build that DIY IKEA greenhouse that everyone's doing, and I do have a humidifier, but I don't want to make a special space just for my humidity loving plants because I only have like three of them like my Trio Star, my Maranta, and this guy. So I'm just like, I will bring this guy. Oh my god, it's already getting brown at the tips here, so fuck me. But I have been, oh, excuse me, bringing him into the bathroom with me. Oh my god, excuse me. I've been bringing him to the bathroom with me as I'm showering, so that will hopefully be a boost of humidity for it. And now that I think about it, I'm not sure if it's slightly beneficial if you bring plants to, you, to your bathroom as you shower because although it makes sense that, um, you know, it's in a steamy room, it's like warm, just like a greenhouse, but and then putting it back to like my window shelf, my window shelf, <laughs> my windowsill, it's the temperature drops because it's not as steamy as the bathroom. So I'm wondering like if that's like creating like a mini shock to the plant. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I don't know if that'll do more damage than good by bringing it to the bathroom with me here and there. So I'm just praying and hoping that this doesn't die on me. I also got this planter for it at Crest Hardware Store in Brooklyn. I love that place. Um, has the attached tray and drainage space on the bottom. Um, but yeah, I'm really digging these like deep earthy wood colors for um, any type of ceramics. If you see my last video and I wrote in the description down below that I purchased a, oh my god, I forgot I bought another plant in there that I forgot to bring out. I'll get it later. Um, that I purchased a Philodendron Gloriosum, which was one of my wishlist plants. And here she is. I love her so much. Like, this is the newest leaf that she put out for me. Like, she grew so big, this leaf in particular. And I cannot be happier with this purchase. Um, and she already has this new, I uh, can't, the, you see that nub right there? You see it? She's still going, she's growing, and um, downside to this new growth, this one started to limp, because before it was like this guy where it was a little bit more perky, but I think it just made room for the new baby leaf that just showed it up. Um, Sorry, I'm very excited for this one, especially in the pot I've got in it. Um, this doesn't have drainage. Um, I personally don't have a preference for pots that do or don't have drainage as long because I trust myself that I won't overwater it. I do have lava rocks on the bottom, but I just, I found this at 
what is it called? Mother of Junk, also in Brooklyn. It's basically a large um, thrift antique shop that just has a lot of random shit, like old furniture, old picture frames, little, like, they have license plates for a box and little bottles. And I found this cute vase pot. And I just, I'm just, if you can't tell, like, I'm slowly gravitating towards, like, I don't know, like, Vintage? I don't know why I say vintage, but it's just more homey, more home decor like pots instead of the traditional like tr terracotta looking pots. But wow, I've I'm just in love. I'm infatuated with this one. Okay, and then um, let me get it now so I don't have to do it later. Um, I also bought. Just a regular heart leaf philodendron. Oh, with this um, macrame hanger. Yes, I love it. And I never really noticed or knew that philodendrons and new growth come out like brown. Like, you see what I mean? Like light brown, like a toasty color, and then it turns green. Sorry, my fucking bangs. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the Hartley Philodendron, just like the green one, but the new growth, the way it comes in, makes me question it, but someone please confirm that this is a regular Hartley Philodendron. If it's something else, also let me know because I generally i am curious. Like, I love it no matter what, but if it's something else, ooh, bonus. But I got this guy from Green Fingers Market in, it's not Soho, it's near Chinatown, basically downtown Manhattan, generally speaking, but great place. They have really uh, affordable macrame hangers that are locally made and are cute. So yes, I do, oh my god, I love it. Look! Oh my god! When I saw this at Dying Plants, also a great plant shop in Chinatown, I just, I love the curly leaves of this spider plant. I, I what is it? The Bonnie spider plant? I, oh my god. It's funny because at my shop, um, I work at the sill, we had a regular, like, straight leafed a uh, spider plant that was actually growing this long tendril of like baby spider plants and it looked really nice very it wasn't like very symmetr symmetrical wow couldn't pronounce that for a second but I just love the way it looked and it's been our sh in our shop for like at least two months I've been keeping my eye on it no one has been buying it so I'm like by the time my birthday rolls around I'm gonna get it and then my birthday rolled around and someone bought it, so I took it as it wasn't meant to be. But then on my way to work after my birthday, I was like, "Look at her just hanging on their display outside." I was like, "Oh my gosh, she's calling my name!" So it wasn't until like two, three days I first saw this one, and I was like, "You know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna get it. I'm not gonna lose my chances again with the other spider plant, and I'm just gonna seize the moment." And I got her. And I just love it so much. You can't go wrong with the spider plant. Okay, next! Um, this is a plant you've actually seen in my last video, but the planter is new. Look it! Yeah, I've just been really gravitated towards pots that are just, they just look homemade or they're, they look like they've been made by like a local ceramicist or something. This also has that like built-in drainage and you know this is like regular twine and it's this is holding the that one um, Scandapsis Argaeus something it was in my last video but I just love the color paired with the color of these leaves and wow I just I just love staring at it also I got this pot at Crest Hardware Store. 
Okay, and another plant that I most recently got is uh, what they call their rehab plants, um, planted by Christy, which is a awesome rare plant specialty shop in LIC. They were having like, this huge sale on um, discounted plants that have just been, you know, old in a store or are like cosmetically and visually damaged but they're still healthy so they're like discounting them so they're calling them the rehab plants and I this is this pot um where is it from also from Chris Hardware <laughs> um but it's I just have it sitting in this pot and it's basically the rehab syngonium variegated pink podophyllum yes as you can tell, she's just a little beaten up, and I feel like this is pretty common for plant shops to have some damaged plants from like transportation. It's just like visually, you know, beaten up a little bit, but nothing too serious. There's like no like invasion of pests from what I know of. I've been keeping my eye on her, and other than that, I mean, she still has a couple of healthy leaves. Um, healthy new growth like this one and you know petioles and stem are feeling firm she's looking good still she just got a little burned or like sunburned or something I don't know what happened but I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to just chop the really bad ones off you know what I'm saying because it's like really crispy and I don't know if it's gonna like get worse but it's been doing fine so far but I don't know, may just keep her like looking like this. But I really liked the color of her leaves paired with this like um, peachy toned terracotta pot. I'm really digging this combo. Um, my last like purchase slash DIY um, plant that I've kind of been working on this past two weeks um, is actually my air plant mount. I'm gonna insert clips here, but wow, I this was heavily inspired by YouTuber Philly Foliage or Nick I, I, his last name is blanking on me, but I will you know have it on screen, but he had his um, air plant mount and I it was one in one of his like house plant tours. And I was like, oh my god, I want one of those. And I've always wanted to try to take care of air plants. <clears throat> Whoa, excuse me. So I used his air plant mount as an, a big inspiration to build mine. And uh, I, you know, Googled research what kind of uh, bark to use and what kind of moss to use. So basically, I just bought cork bark on Amazon and uh, just regular decorative moss. Um, you could also use sphagnum moss, but I didn't want to. And the stick actually, I fetched it from the park nearby because I'm like, why buy a stick on Amazon? <laughs> I mean, you could definitely buy the cork bark on um, or at any local pet store because they're mainly used for like reptile habitats, but that stick from the park and I just use regular Gorilla wood glue and just pasted everything together, let it dry overnight and purchased these air plants from a variety of different stores and I'm just, I love it, I love it so much. Next update, I recently repotted my large-ish um, golden pothos slash jade pothos I I still can't tell if it's a golden or jade because it still has some like yellow specks. But anyways, I repotted her because she was very root bonded and I'm so mad that I didn't film how root bonded she was in that white pot, that white plastic pot. And it was it was a, a uh, struggle because I ordered the plant, the next like size up planter from Amazon. I want to get another plastic one because since she is hanging from a hook, I don't want a heavy 10 inch ceramic pot hanging. So um, I forgot to press place order on Amazon and I had already took her out of the pot and I was like, oh my god, I didn't press, I didn't order it. It was still in my cart so I 
just got the free 30 day trial Amazon Prime to get the pot the next day because she was exposed, her roots were exposed and I was like oh my god, oh my god, she's gonna fucking die and I worked too hard on her but luckily um, the next day since Amazon it ain't prime if they don't give it to me the next day. They gave, they said it would come the next next day. So I was like, oh my gosh, she's, I don't know if she's gonna survive. So luckily I went out on the next day and I went to, I think, where'd it go? I went to Geometry Plant? Geometry Green or something? Another um, cute plant shop in Brooklyn. And they fortunately had, um, eight, I think it was an eight inch, eight inch pots um, that are uh, made of this like eco compostable material so it's also light and I was like, I'm gonna just fucking buy it because I don't think my pothos can wait. So I just bought it and now she's in this cute cork colored um, eco-friendly pot and I love the look of it. I mean the planter from Amazon did come in so I might save that for um, something else in the future, but um, I kind of wish I got a 10 inch one or at least waited for the one from Amazon to come in because it's still kind of snug, but the depth, it's deeper than the previous pot she was in, so I'm hoping that she can live in this pot for the next eight months maybe and I won't have to repot her until next spring because Potting pothos or any like trailing plant is a pain in the ass for me because there's so many little stems and you gotta like hold them together and space them out evenly at the same time is, is an ordeal. But that's an update on her. And then what other update do I have? Oh, my juniper bonsai tree. She's getting brown. I mean, <laughs> I'm not surprised because uh, I don't, I, I think. I know I don't think. I do know that they prefer being outside and you know I'm keeping her inside so I think she's just slowly declining. <coughs> she's getting brown at like the roots of the petioles but the tips are fine. They're still green and lush so I'm not too worried because this is more progress than the first time I had this bonsai tree, like within two weeks of having it the first time around, it completely, the leaves changed like a pale brown and it was crispy and it was just so bad. So I'm kind of proud of myself for keeping it alive still. Yeah, I, as long as the tips aren't getting brown and weird on me, I feel like I, it's still good. She's still good, you know. I'm misting her like every two, three days. I'm making sure her soil is moist because I hear they like moist soil. So, uh, yeah, she's she's doing okay. Another plant update, my Monstera Peru cutting um, gifted for me from my awesome coworker. I love her so much. It's finally growing a baby. She's pregnant and I noticed this little bump a couple days ago and I was so happy because I did notice that since there's only two leaves they were quite parallel with each other for a long time and then all of a sudden one day I saw the one on top just kind of like bend vertically and I'm like, is she okay? And But I didn't think much of it because like nothing was getting discolored or anything. And I'm like, maybe she's making room, you know? for the new growth and then a couple of days later I saw the little bump and I was like oh, she's pregnant okay in the last update on one of my plants I'm sad to say this but you guys remember the red majesty aglaonema you know the one with the beautiful reddish pinkish leaves with the green edges and I put it in this cute blue pot well one by one her leaves not even the stem. The stem holding the entire plant was fine. Just one by one, the petiole of the bottom leaves would just get mushy. And eventually, I just, like, it's so easily, like, taken off. And I'm like, why is it mushy? There's no signs of, like, rot. There's no, like, black coloration. There's, like, no pests. And 
I'm not overwatering it. Okay, this is what people on Reddit have been telling me. They're like, I think you've overwatered your aglaonema or um, you need to stop overwatering it. The moisture meters can be wrong because of the soil pH. And I'm like, excuse me. I have not watered this aglaonema in over a week. And yet two of the petioles have turned mushy on me. How is that overwatering? And then I checked her roots. I took her out of the plastic pot to repot her into the blue one because I was freaking out after two of them um, dropped and got mushy. And her roots are beautiful. They're like white, they're firm, and they're girthy. And I'm like, people on Reddit, you telling me that I'm overwatering this plant or that this plant has root rot? How dare you tell me that when I have proof right here that she's perfectly fine? At least the roots are. So I'm like very confused. I was like, why is she getting like mushy petioles when the stem and the roots are totally fine and this is well draining soil? Every time I watered her like once every other week, it like drains out pretty fine, yet she keeps dropping her leaves. Like, someone please tell me why this happened. But I think it's because there's not enough green pigment on the leaves. There's only a little bit on the edges. And I did notice some, like, yellow um, coloring on the green part. So I... <clears throat> Here she is now. This is what's left of her. I decided not to throw her out or donate her to someone else. Now I'm gonna try to grow her from the start. She was such a beautiful plant and my partner even liked it so much. He was like, that plant just brought so much color and contrast to your other plants. And I'm like, I know. Guys, I am sick of my bangs right now. That is it for my plant updates slash plant haul. Every other plant is doing well. I'm, there's new growth on every single plant, so I cannot be more happy despite the losses. Thank you for stopping by again, and also thank you for the kind responses on my last video. I really didn't expect that many people to see it um, or even care about it, but I really appreciate it and it makes me happy that other people, just like the plant community in general, they're, ugh, we just have an awesome community. We support each other, we help each other out and stuff, so uh, good stuff, wholesome stuff. Thank you guys again and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!